Tank 500 HEV is finally available in Sydney and I finally have hands-on first impressions following a very quick test drive. The car was provided kindly for a test drive by Ride GWM. Visit them in Ride area if you're somewhere nearby. They have all sorts of tanks, all sorts of Havals and other kind of cars, including Aura. Now, I will try to make it as succinct as possible and I will save a more kind of long all-rounded review and my impressions from tank 500 after i had a chance to take it for a longer test drive so stay tuned for that in this video i'm going to focus on the initial very largely positive impressions and i'll give you 10 things that i really liked about it okay but in the next video i think in this mini series so to speak about tank 500 hands-on impressions i'm going to tell you about a few i haven't counted them yet a few at least five things that I'm not a massive fan of. So stay tuned for that. There are some things you need to know before you fork out 73 grand for a Tank 500 Ultra. But today, all good news. Let's talk about all the good news. Let's go. This video is sponsored by the old friends of this channel, Autocast. Autocast are very well established on the market, manufacturers of wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay AI boxes, which is basically a wireless adapter for your car. If your car is struggling with uh, wireless connectivity to built-in uh, wired Android Auto or wired Apple CarPlay, then Autocast is one of the major biggest brands that are offering massive discounts to my community to check out. Check out the links in the description below. They have a lot of units. Lately, I've reviewed like a couple of them. And this is also your chance to check the Auto Gear Reviews sister channel of mine, of Value Cars Australia, where I go in depth into unboxing, installation and other things about these units. Check them out. So first of all, uh, looks are subjective. I always say it, but that's the truth. Everyone says it and it's the, it's the truth. Uh, but subjective or not, I like the look. I like this tall bull shark nose. I like the big American style, I would dare say, SUV, suburban, kind of big SUV style. It, it does look, yes, it does look like TLK 300, T um, Toyota Land Cruiser 300, or maybe Prado if your imagination wanders, but one way or another, I do like this kind of upward facing, unapologetic, not fully boxy, it's not a Jeep Wrangler, but at the same time boxy enough, with a very kind of dull bull shark nose, with this lovely grill. Uh, I do like I do like everything about the look, basically. You tell me in the comments down below if this look resonates with you, with me, with you, it definitely resonates with me, okay? Second point, I do still like the price. I think that for what the vehicle is, uh, yes, long term will show, but overseas already are giving us very, very good more long, mid to long term reports of ownership and stuff. It's a good vehicle for this kind of for this kind of quality, for this kind of uh, you know the amount of stuff you're getting from Tank 500, 73,000 for a top of the range model, and even cheaper for a for a Lux version. Yeah, we spoke enough about this. I don't want to repeat myself. I think the price is very, very fair, and I absolutely love the pricing policy here of GWM. I think the car is going to undercut competition. It's an awesome, awesome uh, offering from GWM. Great. Fantastic price, okay? Point number three, I do like the interior. Uh, the interior design is, in my opinion, again, just like exterior is subjective, interior perception of luxury, perception of what's quality, what's not quality is very, very subjective. Some people are battling with me in the comments with a foamy mouth about trying to prove to me that a Mod 5 is very, very high quality, and I still think that it's a bit plasticky. Well, here, yes, there is plastic, yes, there are rubberized kind of materials and stuff, there is sort of fake, or maybe it's real, but it seems a bit of fake wooden insets in the door, at least they pretend to be wooden, but I think it's all high quality enough for me to think it's definitely value for money, and I do genuinely like the design. We're talking purely about the design. I do like that clock, analog clock in the middle that is probably of no consequence how many people will look at it really, but I, I love it. I think it's a nice little splash there. I, I do still think that it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and the ergonomics of the panels, the charging panel for your phone, the little closing kind of shelves there that you can close up if you're not using them, if you don't want like it dusting up there wherever you are. I think it's all stylish enough and it's, it's, a, it's, a, nice, it's a nice design. It's nice, ergonomic, something that I would expect from GWM and Tank with the shelving, with the storage unit here in the middle, with the whole panel in, in the center. I do like that. Point number four are the analog buttons. There are a lot of them. 
pretty much every imaginable function, the key function that you need. I don't know, starting with air conditioning and finishing with changing of the uh, downhill descent assistant, you know, and assisted turns and all those kind of things. The driving modes, etc., etc., are all available through analog buttons, which I cannot say about, say, this Subaru Outback and a lot of other vehicles that are these days simply hiding all that functionality behind the big screen in electronics. I'm not a fan of that, and I'm a big fan of this. I'm a fan of these analog buttons. Good job, GWM. Good job, Tank, in this particular case. Now, when I take, took it for a test drive, and it's in no particular order, we'll be going back and forth between these um, points that I uh, shortlisted, I really like how heads-up display works in this particular case. I think it has something to do with slightly limited visibility, which, which is something that is not good, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about it in the other video, but heads-up display really, really helps me focus on the road ahead when the visibility is already not great and that there is this long, massive bonnet in front of you. So the last thing you want is to, even for a split second, sort of to look at the instrument's panel as opposed to, you know, keep your eyes on the road and make sure that you actually can see where you're going. So heads-up display is bright. I, I took it for a test drive during the day, daytime hours. So the, it was sunlit and everything, and it was very visible. It was probably the very first time uh, where I drove a vehicle with a head, heads-up display, where I really appreciated heads-up display rather than so, thought that it was a gimmick. I think that it's a good thing. Now, uh, point number six is... It's an HEV, it's not a plug-in hybrid, it's a closed-circuit hybrid, yeah, a vehicle. And uh, under, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I never pretend to be a mechanic or understand it really, really deeply, I don't need to, I'm just a user, right? Uh, but my understanding is that under a certain speed, as long as there is battery charge, obviously, uh, HEV is going to use electric power until the car reaches a certain speed, and then it kicks in the petrol engine, the petrol motor, yeah? So... I did not know what to expect from, say, low speeds performance of such a big vehicle. It's an HEV. You think, you think that that's exactly where it would be lacking, but it was the opposite, and I was very positively surprised. Acceleration, like moving from static of that massive seven-seater in a full HEV mode, yeah, on electric power motor, was actually very, very impressive. It was powerful, it felt powerful, uphill it felt powerful, downhill it felt powerful. I was really impressed how smooth, quiet, obviously, and everything that it felt. It was actually very, very noticeably awesome. I really, really enjoyed how HEV mode, at least at low speed, how it was working. Definitely pay attention to that when you take the car for a test drive. Now, the sidestep, let's talk about sidestep. When I was reviewing the car theoretically based on just website and looking at the things, I speculated that the sidestep, like automatically extendable sidestep and retractable sidestep is a gimmick. I thought that that's something that I would not pay money for if I was considering a top of the range ultra that comes with that feature. I can tell you that I would love to stand corrected. You know, I, I made an assumption, hypothesis, and that hi hypothesis didn't work out. I was again positively surprised about the ergonomics of the vehicle where I got into the car. I can't even remember if I particularly used the step to get into the car. However, I completely forgot about it. I test drove the car. I, I went around like mental notes, com completely was like in my own zone. Then I stopped the car to get out of it and my foot automatically went somewhere where the sidestep was really, really helpful. Like, I didn't expect it there, I didn't think about it, but it was there. And it made my exit from the vehicle, which is a pretty tall vehicle, you gotta say, much, much easier. So that's sidestep, my friends. For I'm not a shorty, but neither am I a massive dude. So uh, for a 175 centimeter, about 86 kilo man, this was just right. This was just right. Sidestep is very much not a gimmick. It's really, really a cool feature. I really, really liked it. So I'm going to say it's not a gimmick. Now, talking about the interior space in general has to be mentioned. Uh, nothing not to like there. See, here I'm sitting in this Subaru Outback and I got used to it. Yeah, and I use the car for camping and everything like that. But to give you a practical example, the wind windshield is very slopey. I have headroom here not being a super tall dude, but at the same time, I don't have much of it. I don't feel like I'm in a slightly boxier, slightly area space. Even in Tank 300, I feel better. I like feeling a little bit like it's a bit of a room. While in this case, it's a bit of a capsule. Does it make sense? Uh, in the case of Subaru. So, 
Tank 500 definitely feels like that room. It feels very roomy, it feels boxier, interior space is massive, looking back is massive, and no, before you ask me, I have not spent enough time with the vehicle to sit in the passenger seat and comment on the passenger seat. We're going to follow up on that. I really took the car for like a 15-20 minute test drive. That These are all first impressions, and I think they are of value to anyone who is considering to buy based on those first impressions, right? But I do like the interior space. I like how generous it is, there is only so much to say about it, but it's worthy of a mention. Now, the totally a gimmick, this time it's definitely a gimmick, but I love it. There, there are buttons in the boot, in the walls of the boot, that are electrically enable, enabling folding and unfolding of the third row of seats. And I believe that there, are, there, is a, there are similar buttons that are folding second row of seats, but I didn't play with them. I spent like five to ten minutes, which is a long time, playing with those buttons folding that third row of seats. Why is it a gimmick? Because you absolutely don't need them. Unless I don't know what kind of scenario is where all you have is one finger to press and make sure that it folds and unfolds, and with the other finger you're holding a baby or something else, but why not put the baby down? I don't know. I don't want to go into that scenario speculation. I think it's a complete gimmick because folding it manually would have been faster as well, and this is super slow, but it's fun, and I think it's great that it's there. So to mention to you this, that's definitely a worthy point number nine. And finally, I'm going to mention, unsurprising for GWEM, but still worthy of a mention, amazing central infotainment and camera screen. Two in one, you get two points in one here. High quality, amazing visibility forward, amazing visibility as you reverse, good positioning of instruments and, and the whole cluster over there. Um, basically, amazing quality, especially when I go back to my Japanese-made, allegedly better manufacturing and all that kind of stuff, but you go there, you, as in, you go here and you start using the reverse camera here or even looking at this instrument cluster. And after Tank 500, in all honesty, my friends, this Subaru Outback 2023, brand new, looks like it was made in 1996. Honestly, it does. Come on, look at this camera quality and look at that camera quality of Tank 500. I'm sure you would agree with me. And these are 10 points straight away. Boom, 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 boom. Something that I felt as a... You know, I'm a friend of GWM brand, but I, I say the truth. Uh, I am praising what deserves praising, and I am sort of not, hold, not pulling any punches, not holding back when there is something to criticize, which is exactly what we're going to talk about in the next video. In the next video, I am going to talk to you about at least five things. I could think of more, but at least five things that I didn't like, and $73,000 for an ultra version top of the range of Tank 500 HEV is worth your money, in my opinion, if you decided to buy the vehicle. However, it's still 73 grand, so before you fork it out, you need to know of things that potentially would annoy you, potentially would annoy you, and I know I haven't spent enough time to like dissect it properly and hopefully I will add to this list and I'll be more informative for you but at least five things I have for you for the next video which are going to be a bit of a a bit of a a bit of a downer but at the same time worthy of conversation but overall initial impressions great vehicle good value for money good quality great reports coming from overseas super glad that we finally have them here in Australia and I think you should visit GWM ride ride GWM depending how you put these two words together and take the car for a test drive never buy anything or discount anything without taking it for a test drive first I hope you've enjoyed this video please give me a like YouTube algorithm will show it to more people if you like it and subscribe for more because a lot more is there to say about value for money cars in Australia and tank specifically thank you for watching Goodbye for now.